Also in that division, the Indianapolis Colts. The Indianapolis Colts, one year ago, traded the, uh, their first round pick for a man who would go on to become the staple of the defensive line for the Indianapolis Colts. Ladies and gentlemen, DeForest Buckner. Yeah! yeah! Hell yeah! yeah! What's up, dude? How we doing, everybody? Hey, as soon as you got to the Indianapolis Colts, last year we did a draft special. Uh, a lot of people watched. Too many people watched. A lot of people came on the show. Chris Ballard was our first guest before the draft started. We asked him what he's going to be doing for the first round. Is he thinking about maybe trading to get back into the first round because he traded away in their moment pick? And he said, I think he said, I'm going to have some beers and I'm going to watch uh, DeForest Buckner film real quick yeah. <laughs> and be pumped that there is nobody like him in, uh, in the first round. Whenever you got to Indianapolis, what was the conversation like with Chris Ballard? Was it a surprise that you got traded? Uh, how was the, the kind of transition to becoming a Colt? over here yeah the transition was really smooth actually um you know I, as a player um you know you know being with san francisco i never expected to get traded but i mean it's part of the game you know what i mean and um you know i was i was just very blessed and fortunate that a, a guy like chris you know saw the value in me and you know he he believed in me and the, the, what i could bring to the table and uh, when i got to indianapolis and i you know he was one of the first people i talked to I went over to his house we, we spoke for about an hour you know just about everything and about life and you know it was from then on i mean i knew i was in the right spot um you know coming to a team with great culture um it's always in the mix um I was, I was just very excited to get everything started going back to your time in san fran obviously they drafted you first round high pick you get in there with kyle shanahan john lynch at the helm with the gm what was it like? Shanahan obviously is a young genius play caller. Like, what's the what's the culture he's created? It seems to be pretty good. Yeah, the culture that uh, that we created with uh, Shanahan when they got there, my second year. I mean, it was you know it was phenomenal. Uh, you know, they they clean house pretty much. You know, a majority of the roster from my rookie year. Um, you know, they brought in new guys, free agents. Uh, you know, a lot of rookies played. Uh, so we we were able to turn around and it's you know create a whole new culture there um, leading up to the Super Bowl and uh, you know they still have a great culture there now and you know just just the the way the player the player type of coach that uh, Shanahan is and you know John you know he's been a you know he's been a player and so he knows what the the players are going through and um, that easy relationship from a player to GM GM to player um, was really good you know it, it's, it was working well out there and. Um, you know, it's, you know, the way it's just the way business is, you know, in, uh, in the game that we chose. And um, sometimes you got to make moves, you know, uh, and sacrifices for the betterment of the team. And uh, unfortunately, I was one of those sacrifices uh, in the long <laughs> end. But you know what I mean? It's all good because I'm, I'm happy to be here in Indianapolis. I, I don't I don't know who sacrificed more from that move, to be honest. But the <laughs> Bob Sala was the defensive coordinator whenever you were over there. He just got hired for the Jets. And, and we'll turn the conversation to the Colts, we promise. But, I mean, you, you were such a great addition to the Colts from that defense that was, you know, talk about this This defense could win a Super Bowl itself. Last year, uh, Bob Sala was the face of everything because he's out on the field. He's obviously pumped up. And then his name's like, this guy's going to be a head coach. This guy's going to be a head coach. Doesn't get hired. Now he's with the Jets. What was your time like with uh, Robert Sala? And do you think he's going to be a good head coach? Yeah, I, man, I, I love Sala. Um, you know, the, the time that I was there, um, you know, he believed in my abilities. And he, you know, we, we didn't just connect on a, a coach player basis. But I mean, he's a, a really good friend. Um, I love his family. He has a beautiful family. Um, and I wish him nothing but the best. So I was so happy when I found out last night that he got the head coaching job with the Jets. Um, you know, to see him, you know, the type of man, uh, coach, uh, mentor that he is, and uh, just a leader of men. Um, you know, he knows how to get guys going and ready to play for him. And um, I think he's going to be a phenomenal head coach. Um, and uh, the New York Jets, I mean, they don't even know what's what's coming their way. Um, just a quick follow up there. The um, that spiral staircase behind you can't fit up that. Right. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, I can. Uh, I, made, I made a couple trips up and down before. Uh, for those that are just listening, he's sitting in a room that seems to have, it has a spiral staircase up to what may, might be a library or a den or something like that. Yeah, you know, we're working on the book collection. Oh, <laughs> nice. we got to fill it up. <laughs> That's like AJ. Yeah, AJ doesn't have a spiral staircase up to it, but uh, I. <laughs> I have, I have something similar in my house. It goes down to my gym, 
and I'm six foot one, 230 to 270 pounds. And it is okay. a, You're a big man. Yeah. Well, depending on when, when you catch me, which diet, but I, it's hard for me to get down there. So while you're answering that last question, which was a great answer on Robert Sala, all I thought about is how I would fall down those steps, I think, because of how difficult it is because you got to get thin. Mm-hmm. You're, you're yeah. a massive man, massive. Okay. And whenever you were out this year for the Colts, it was very obvious in the middle of that defensive line. The Titans game just comes to mind immediately because they were obviously very strong up the gut. Were you a basketball player? Did you grow late? When Were you always just a massive dominant player? Like what, what is the, the story of becoming just an absolute incredibly athletic, savage of a big man? Like when did they, was that your entire <laughs> career or what was it? No, nah, I, was, I was actually, I mean, basketball was my first love, honestly. Uh, I played basketball growing up, started when I was seven. And uh, it honestly helped me, you know, with my athleticism um, moving into football. I uh, started football when I was 10. Um, you know, I was, I was always the tall, lanky kid, honestly. I never really filled out and, uh, until I got to college. You know, when I got to college, um, my senior year of high school, I was like 240. Six, six, seven, two forty. Uh, by the time the start of my my freshman year, I ended up being two seventy five, and then I just gradually put on the weight uh, going forward. By the ending, by, by my senior year, I was like three hundred and ten pounds in my last game. Jeez, Ooh. what are you at now? Yeah. Where are you at now? A good two ninety. Okay. <laughs> Do your joints hurt, or is that just how your body's supposed to be? Your your body's supposed to be six, seven, two ninety, or is there like does your body beat you up a little bit for how big you are? Um, you know, depending when I get around that 300, uh, you know, 305, 10 pound range, that's, that's when I start filling in my joints. I think when I, when I get done, I think I'm going to slim up. Honestly, I'm probably going to be around good 270. Oh, you're going to be an 80. Instagram model out there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I respect it. Hey, DeForest, what, uh, what was it like being on the field and getting to watch Phil Rivers in action on your own team? Mm-hmm. Like, was it what you expected? Oh yeah. I mean, Philip is one hell of a competitor. Um, uh, honestly, I grew up a Chargers fan, so I grew up watching them. And uh, I, mean, I thought it was a pretty surreal feeling, you know, being able to actually play with Philip on my team uh, this year. I mean, he's he's the ultimate competitor, man, um, from start to finish. Um, whether it's cornhole in the in the locker room to you know being on the field and competing, um, he's just the ultimate competitor, ultimate leader, um, and, and what a, a great teammate. You know, um, uh, coming in and. You know, finding out that Philip Rivers was um, going to be my, my teammate and going to be a, a starting quarterback. Um, you know, I didn't really expect. I mean, I, I knew the, the type of player, the type of competitor that he was, but then you know, I didn't know the type of teammate that he was. And, uh, you know, from his first day, you know, coming in, I mean, he made an effort to, you know, to know everybody. Hey, you good at Cornell? I'm all right. I'm, I'm all right. I let, I let everybody else. Oh, uh, you're bad at Cornell. Oh. <laughs> hey, you just said you're bad at Cornell. I, I just heard that. <laughs> I, I just heard that in your voice. You don't play much? Yeah. I don't play much. I, I try to I try to do get some reps in the offseason. You know what I mean? So next year when I come in, you know what I mean? Hey, sharpen the sword, pal. Ooh. Sharpen the sword. Damn right. Yeah, that is a very smart. Isn't there also a basketball shooting, right, in the, in the team meeting room or anything? Uh, nah. I mean, so, I mean. We didn't. We didn't have meetings in the. the oh wait, there, yeah, actually, there is. There is a shoot. Yeah, we had a shooting competition. Yeah, there is a basketball hoop in the team meeting room. Did you yeah. get involved in that? Did you get involved in that? I did. How was your shot? I did a little bit. A little bit. My shot's pretty good. My shot's pretty. I still got it a little bit. Six foot seven, you can move. You've got a good shot. Go yoke on that thing. I mean, I understand you like beating up offensive linemen. <laughs> Pacers. There's another league that Pacers are playing right now. The Go. Pacers are playing right, right now. now. Connor, what do you got? Yeah, DeForest, was there a point during either preseason or early on in the year where you knew Jonathan Taylor was going to be a serious guy going forward at running back? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, when we when I saw them uh, pick him up in the draft, I, mean, I was ecstatic, especially behind the – the, the defense, um, the old line that we have, um, you know what I mean? It took him a while to, you know, to really uh, catch his stride. I mean, he was playing solid ball, um, you know, how, you know, the first half of the season, but then he just exploded the second half. And I mean, he ended up what, top three rushers in the league. And I mean, um, you know, every, you could just tell that everything just started to slow down for him. Um, he started to see his blocks and hit the holes, you know, um, even harder. So it was, it was amazing to see his growth throughout the season. Hey, tell me about Darius Leonard. I watch a lot of mic'd ups of him. And while the one today was hot rod was kicking, and by the way, defense 
whenever the uh, field goal team is on the field, right, they've done nothing for a while, right? They've been on the sideline here. There's been obviously uh, a fourth down as companies. Darius Slender was standing on the sideline imitating Hot Rod's yeah. thing, and they said flex on him. And then Darius Leonard, defensive line, was out there slapping hands of the field goal team. Very rare. Okay, this is not a normal yeah. thing. Normally the quarterback's out there or maybe some like on the mm-hmm. offensive side because they've gone down there. Darius was doing that. It, is the I guess I would say, does your team just incredibly connected? Like Frank Reich, whenever he talked oh, yeah. afterwards, he was getting emotional about the team. Like, and how is how did you gel into that culture? What is it like oh, with yeah. Darius in there? And how do mm-hmm. you continue to build on that culture to take the next step? Because it feels like the entire team is there, offense, defense, and special teams. You just got to take the next step. What is it about that culture? And how do you get to the next step, you think? Yeah, that was that was honestly the one thing that really hit, you know struck me um, when I first got there, which made it a super smooth transition for me um, coming in the locker room, um, just the culture in general. Um, you know, everybody – Everybody has each other's back, man. It doesn't matter what position, doesn't matter what race, it doesn't matter, you know, where you come from. Uh, once you're in there and you you buy into the culture, you buy into the team, um, everybody has your back. And um, Darius, he's been doing that all year, you know, since I got here, you know, after kicking a field goal, he's on the field, you know, dapping everybody up. Uh, that little imitation of hot rod that he, he did on the sideline, he does that, I mean, almost every time we do field goal, field goal block in practice. You can see him <laughs> on the film imitating hot rod, doing his whole little flex. <laughs> And everything and dancing and everything. I mean, it's it's just amazing to see the type of players. You know, uh, there's there's no egos. You know what I mean? Everybody puts their ego aside, and everybody's just preparing each and every day for each other. You know what I mean? When we get out there, we're playing for each other, and you can see that there's not a bunch of individuals. It's like it's one unit. That's awesome. Absolutely incredible. What do you got, Dick? DeForest, dumb question coming here. Um, Very saw, dumb, probably. I saw you were born <laughs> and played high school football in Hawaii. Aloha. Mm-hmm. And as a human that has watched hours and hours of haka dances on youtube mm. does every single high school team do a haka dance before the game against each other mm-hmm. okay. and do you no, know no 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 <laughs> <laughs> no not not every single team no unfortunately not is your family in the military uh my mom i mean she's a she's like a contractor specialist for the for the army which oh. is no uh, i had some i had some family members that were in the military yes but so, uh, my initial family no i love hawaii man uh, it's my favorite yeah, place. Do you get back much? Oh yeah, I'm actually planning on getting back in February just to visit some family. Um, uh, a lot of my family have they haven't met my son yet, so I'm excited about that. Due to COVID, you know what I mean, all the lockdowns and, and things like that. Uh, he was born in the middle of the pandemic, uh, you know, last year. So uh, nobody but my mom was able to come come see him. So I'm I'm very excited to take him out there, you know, see show him the roots. Hey, that's awesome. Congratulations on the child. Congratulations on the incredible season. Can't wait to see what you do next with the Colts. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me, Pat. Hey, get some damn books in that thing before. <laughs> you know, maybe read a little bit. Get a little cultured up there. I got I got you. I got you. It's like, next time I'm on the show, it'll be filled up, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, DeForest Buckets. Thank you, man. Let's go, boys. Woo! Hey, he was really cool. Mm-hmm. Really, really cool. Normally, if you're out in Hawaii, though, too. what's that? What'd you say, AJ? Very good football player as well. Unbelievable. He's the one who recovered the fumble, by the way, against yeah. Green Bay Packers in overtime that was out on the sideline. He's an interior defensive lineman. I mean, he, is, he flies around. He's a big dude. I want to talk about, you know, the potential ugly shots that happen in the interior of uh, offensive line, D-line, mm-hmm. potential, yeah. anything, especially with how tall he is. Oh, yeah. I would assume there's a lot of moments where potential low bridge comes mm-hmm. out of him. He's, he's a freak athlete, though. It's unbelievable yeah. to watch him, AJ.